Hello and welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're all doing well. Today we are talking about one particular plant in my collection and that is the Epipremnum aureum Marble Queen. A very common plant, a plant you will find, might I say, in almost every plant shop online or in a garden centre. It's a very, very common plant. It grows really well for people. It's quite an easy plant to grow and that's why it does so well. It's a bit of a classic, to be honest. Some common names, Pothos, Marble Queen Pothos. I am not quite sure of the origin of these plants being called Pothos, but um, it is commonly called that for some reason, even though it is indeed an Epipremnum. So a little bit of background about this plant, which if you don't know, when I do give backgrounds on plants, it is generally from a fantastic resource from the Royal Botanic Gardens Q, and it's called Plants of the World Online, and it's a great way to look up species, just get basic information on distribution, native habitat, um, when it was first published, etc, etc. This plant is a climber and it's from a wet tropical biome. It was first published in 1964, which to be honest, I would have expected this to be published a lot um, longer than that. That's pretty recent. It was first described by G.S. Bunting, Lyndon and Andre. So this plant, it says that it is native to the Society Islands. I'm not quite sure where they are, but we will put it on the screen. And it is introduced to much of the world. India, South America, Africa, um, Philippines, all through those areas. I've seen them in Lebanon. I've seen them all over. I think they just grow so well in so many different climates. That's why it does well as a houseplant, but it's also why it's been introduced to a lot of habitats that it should not technically be in. So this plant, which by the way, is this one that I'm going to be talking about today, is a climber. It likes to climb up trees, mostly in the wild, anything it can climb up to get to a higher light level. And as it climbs up, it also has aerial roots along its vines, which will attach to give it more support so that it can actually start to grow larger leaves. And in the mature form of this plant, these larger leaves will start to grow things called fenestrations, which are basically just holes in the leaves. Now we don't fully know why fenestrations exist technically, but there's a lot of speculation out there. It could be to do with surviving harsh weather conditions, like excess wind, so it doesn't rip the leaves. It could be to do with letting water through the leaves. It could be to do with um, pest protection, a lot of different things, but that is the mature form of this plant. Now I will insert a picture of what that looks like in the wild here, <laughs> so you can see. So I wanted to make a video specifically about this plant because it is doing so well for me and I'm really, really happy about it. And the way that I have chosen to grow this plant has changed so much since I first got it and it's just thriving. And I think a lot of you would be excited to see it as well. So if you haven't watched my video on using a cork board. That is currently what I grow it on. And I will show you in depth about that, but it is essentially just a board of cork, <laughs> cork board that people use as notice boards and stuff. And I get these pieces on Amazon. They have a sticky back, but you can attach them to the wall. I actually don't use the sticky back because it's not very good. And I have turned to nailing it into the wall, which yes, we are renting this house, but I will just, have to deal with filling in those holes when we leave. <laughs> but it is the only way that I've managed to have it really attached to the wall so that I can really provide that support. I found as the plant got bigger, having command strips and other sticky stuff at the back just wasn't cutting it and it was peeling off in edges. And I was very afraid that this was going to snap the vine. So first things first, where is it growing? Okay, so where I have it, it is in a giant pot. Can you even see that well enough from here? It's in a really, really, really big pot. Um, if I can try and show you underneath all the vines, it's huge. It's the largest 
size pot that I have. I have a few plants in a similar size pot, but it is very, very big. And I made the decision to move it to a big pot when it was not that much of a large plant, to be honest. Um, I just found that its roots were growing really, really fast. It was having to be up potted quite a lot, like it was growing out of its pot a lot. And because I wanted to grow this plant really big, I had to constantly maintain that so that it would keep pushing new growth and pushing to have a bigger root system, etc, etc. It also, when the plant got bigger, it was getting heavier. And so having a taller, deeper pot, it was able to kind of anchor the plant when it got to a heavier stage. Um, and that was just providing more soil area, surface area for the roots to really um, yeah, anchor themselves so that it wouldn't tip over. Because that was happening to me a lot when I had it in smaller pots, maybe about this high. So what it's planted in is not anything special in terms of a soil mix. I have a big substrate video that I'm working on at the moment, which is going to be in depth into all different substrates and things that I use, but also give a background on their sustainability and all of that. But for short, what I have this in is a mix of coconut core and cerami, which is kind of like small ceramic pieces, um, like clay pieces, which are porous. Um, there's a little bit of bark in there. There's a little bit of leka in there. There is a bit of perlite or vermiculite, either or. And there's also some organic compost, which is the same compost I use outdoors. It has a high organic content. It's very dark in color. It has a lot of worm castings. So it has nutrients from the organic compost. It has moisture retention from the coconut core. I never let this dry out too much, which is the key to using coconut core. <laughs> it also has a lot of aeration with the cerami, leka, uh, bark, perlite, vermiculite, all of that good stuff. It has a good balance of providing oxygen to the roots by having kind of porous material and chunky material in there, but also moisture retention and nutrition. That is kind of my basis for almost all of the plants that I grow indoors, but that is for another video. For the purpose of this video, that's what I'm growing it in. Um, when did I repot this? Possibly at some point last year. I'm not entirely sure. I had propagated maybe one or two very short stems, which I then replanted in the top. But in general, I'm gonna show you the top now. Any smaller vines, I actually wove around the edge of the pot so that it would start to root and fill in. And I stuck that in with uh, bobby pins, like those little brown hair clips, to secure it into the soil for the roots to grow. And that is what has made the top kind of fill out a bit. And I'll show you that now. So this is what we're looking at at the top. So if I move some of this, you can actually see very clearly here because it's come out of the pot. This was a vine that I had stuck down, which has actually come undone. So I had stuck this down into the soil like so. Very hard to show this. And then these roots grew and grew into the soil. So that also provides it with more support. It can also encourage new growth. We have some new vines that have kind of sprouted out of nowhere, but it's pretty happy up here. Obviously the main plant is in the middle, but we do have some newer growth happening and it's been anchored all around the pot, which I need to tie down again, obviously. It's going to be absolutely impossible to show you all of this plant, how it is in person, because it just does not translate onto camera. But one of these vines I have up here growing along my branch that is suspended up here with my air plants. This is dead. <laughs> the rest are not. So obviously with the way this plant has grown, I don't move this. There is nothing I can do to move this until we actually move house because <laughs> I can't take this pot like I do with my other plants, move it into the bathroom, put it into the bath, give it a wash down, you know, fertilizer. I water it in place and I'm very careful about that. I'm going to try and show you <laughs> how big it is and where it's growing because it's kind of growing everywhere and it's difficult to show that on camera, but we're gonna try. So we have the main pot here. We have quite a few vines coming down here. 
We have one vine that has grown up along here. Here's the top of it. <laughs> um, then we have some vines coming down here near the plug. And then this is where they start growing up the cork board. And then I have just attached them and it grows up. We have vines coming down here. We have one coming across here now. And um, we have that vine that's going up. We have, so we have the main vines coming here, going down, 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 down. We have one going across here and is growing up through. Then we have vines that continue down. Yes, what happens with older plants is they lose their younger leaves. So these vines don't really have much leaf going on until they get down to the bottom. So then here, and I'm actually gonna move this tortum so it's a bit clearer. Excuse the mess. So we have the vines going up and then this is where they start to grow on the cork board. So as you can see, it only took a little bit for the aerial roots to start attaching on here. Like look, if I can move all of these leaves, look how long they got. And that just really continued, that just really continued up. You can see these smaller aerial roots and this is where it starts to get much more mature. A few things happen at this point. So the aerial roots no longer just let me zoom in. The aerial roots no longer just come from the nodes. They actually start coming from the full length of the internodal spacing. So these smaller aerial roots, these ones seem to be really for support. They're really, really, really stuck on there. These ones provide kind of secondary support, I guess. One thing I really noticed is actually the change in texture of the stem stem started to become ridged. So you see these lines, these are actually textured lines and they're like, they're quite raised. And this actually itself was a mechanism for attaching it to the cork board. And this just continues to grow up. So if we follow it, let's follow the main vine. So that is down here. We get up here to where it joins. As you can see, the ridges are getting more and more pronounced, like they're really, really deep here, and they're providing support and also attaching on where they can. You can see loads of the internodal spacing aerial roots here as it gets bigger and bigger. Size of the leaves at this point, just a bit bigger than my hand. Okay, let's keep focusing on the stem. If you can see, really, really much wider now and, and the ridges more pronounced. This is just huge, this part here. It's really thick, it's about two centimeters thick. So now we're getting onto the change in leaf size, which is actually very easily shown because this is the standard side of the leaves and these are the ones I've now grown, which are just so large. They are so big, I cannot believe that I've grown this in here. <laughs> but let me just show you the secondary vine before I show you how big these leaves are. We have quite a few vines growing here. We have one down here that has a bit of a ripped leaf, like they're still growing up. But this one is the main one that has continued beside this vine. Um, it actually needs to be stuck on a little bit better than it is. It's kind of turning. But this one is a lot more variegated than the other one. It's much more marble queeny. This one, this vine lost a bit of its variegation. It still has it, but it's obviously not as pronounced. Yeah, so how did I guide it up the cork board? All I used was a combination of pins and then some string when it wasn't attached. So as you can see on my varicosum here, the way I would attach it before the aerial roots stuck on was just using two pins and a piece of twine that would hold it in place. Then, as it started to attach itself, I really just used the pins as a guide to kind of make sure that it was staying on the cork board, if you know what I mean. If you can see the size of my head, maybe that helps, and the size of my hand. Like, these are humongous leaves, absolutely huge. 
I don't see any signs of fenestrations quite yet, but I think that they're very close. But what's unfortunate is that obviously that leaf is still growing, but it's going to hit the ceiling pretty soon, which is really unfortunate. I'm not quite sure what's going to happen then, to be honest. My real key with this plant was just letting it grow and being patient and I feel like that's what I might do when it hits the ceiling. I will just see what it wants to do. If it wants to grow along the ceiling, maybe I'll just let it. <laughs> so that is my beautiful Epipremnum. As far as how did I get it this big, I've shown you the substrate. I've shown you kind of how I've given it the tools and location it needs to grow large. But in all essence, it has just been really consistent care and not propagating, trust me. I've been so turned off. At the beginning of my plant journey, I was so into propagating. It's really exciting. But really in order to grow plants really large, you have to not do that. You have to have a lot of patience. Even when it start, like it looks pretty shitty and it can be annoying. Like this plant was really annoying me for a while because it was getting too top heavy. It was it lost a lot of its leaves on its older vines. You know, but I just let it do its thing. And that is a huge, huge lesson, which can be obviously passed on to a lot of different aspects of your life. But it's just been consistent care. And to be honest, consistent watering, making sure it doesn't get too dry, making sure that it has adequate fertilization. That's all I've really done. Other than having the right setup, giving it the cork board, there's a lot of light in this area. Even this part seems to have enough light. It's absolutely fine with that. Even though this corner like kind of only has indirect light, this vine is still very variegated. So it's just about consistent care. Big, huge pot, really good quality substrate with all the different elements that it needs. Cork board, light, consistent care and watering and that has really been it and it's something that I have to say is what is so rewarding a lot of the times about common plants that can be kind of what's the word they're just not given they're just passed off you know a lot of the time and of course plants there's so many beautiful and rare plants but we have to have an appreciation for all plants if we're going to take care of habitats and ecosystems because everybody has their part to play of course we are indoors that is not the same situation however growing common simple plants like this indoors can give you it gives you that appreciation <laughs> you know this plant as i've shown when i first got it wasn't much to look at and now it is probably one of the most successful plants that i've grown in terms of getting it to mature a lot you know and um, there's maybe three or four house plants in my entire collection that i can confidently say that with and i'm so excited by it it excites me i can't believe it's grown this big um definitely cork board was essential it really really was providing a good lateral space that has is porous enough for those aerial roots to grow into it's changed the game for me. <laughs> Definitely has me thinking a lot about what my next plant setup, I want that, what I want that to look like. A lot of it is not going to be shelving. That's for one thing. <laughs> um, if I could cover this entire room in corkboard, I would, but that would be too much. That is it for this video. That is how I've grown this Epipremnum to be this large. I love it. It's my baby. Let me know if you have any common plants in your collection that are one of your faves. I would love to hear your stories. If you've had any success growing climbing plants like this to maturity, please let us know tips down in the comments because it's such an exciting part of growing house plants. So a special shout out to my patrons for supporting me again this month. Thank you so much to Amanda, Amy, Grace, Hope, Michael and Yay and Dee for your support this month. It truly means the world to me. If you're interested in joining my Patreon, the link is on the screen and also in the description of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you very soon in the next video. Bye.